All right, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Aaron. I am one of the owners here at Castle Building Remodeling. Um, kind of a bathroom class, kind of go over general questions, our general process and how we work our bathroom remodels kind of from beginning to end. Um, it's very laid back. Uh, please feel free to jump in, ask questions as we go. We'll kind of go through here. Uh, we have three showrooms. Um, we have St. Paul showroom, which we are at now, which is on Snelling and Jefferson in Highland neighborhood. Uh, we have just recently opened on 54th and Diamond Lake Road, a uh, showroom in South Minneapolis. I drive by that, looks great. Thank you very much. And mm -hmm. uh, our main headquarters where most of our people office is in Northeast Minneapolis on 26th and Johnson. It's our agenda for tonight. I'll kind of go through the planning your bathroom remodeling project. Just kind of our things to think about as you're designing a project. Bath products and trends. Timing the remodel and kind of the scheduling and how we, how we work that. Costs, estimating costs, what costs money, how you can save money. Bath inspirations and ideas. Basically, we'll go through a bunch of pictures. Uh, we'll talk about, uh, basically the pictures kind of jog people's memories with questions. But again, through this whole thing, please ask questions the whole time. Some remodeling resources that we use. And then again, at the end questions, but it's any time during the process. Uh, so design process, every remodel has to start with a good design. Uh, here at Castle, we're really, really anal about making sure that before we go into production, uh, we've thought our entire process through from beginning to end, everything from where the toilet paper ho holder is going to the color of the walls, to the tile, to the layout, to everything else that may be involved in the project. So first, if you are looking to talk to Castle about a remodel, you'll be giving us a call and our sales manager will designate one of our uh, people to come out and take a look at your house. Um, and one of our sales uh, people will come out. We'll uh, take pictures and dimensions of the space, uh, take measurements and just kind of talk through your ideas and what you're thinking you'd like it to end up looking like. After that, we'll go back and create a ballpark estimate and with that ballpark estimate, you know, based off all the questions we had talked about at our first visit, uh, we can come up with a pretty accurate ballpark cost on what your bathroom will cost. Uh, we'll, we'll put in allowances, like it, we'll put, you know, 250 bucks in for a, a shower fixture. We'll put in, you know, $100 for a pedestal sink or what, whatever the case may be, just to kind of get some ballparks in there. But uh, usually our ballparks are, on the bathrooms are within 5 to 6%. After that, we'll email you your ballpark price and we'll have a second meeting in our showroom. We'll kind of go through the proposal, we'll talk about some different ideas, kind of narrow down some of your selections at our selection centers. We have all sorts of things to show you at our showrooms that can help narrow some of those things down. Our design and planning fee for a bathroom is $225, which is pretty competitive in the industry. Most people charge by the hour, um, but we are real big on making sure that however many means it takes that you get what you want. So is that service that you've described 225 bucks? Yes, yes, exactly. So, um, so for the 225, $225 would get you from that first visit through the ballpark estimate um, and actually get you through your whole design process to a finished product that you could in theory then produce a project out of. Okay, so we come to my house and talk about a bathroom initially or? Initially, I do come out to your house and we'll talk through kind of your ideas, what you're thinking, um, and just kind of your general thoughts, uh, sense of style. Um, I'll take a look at some of the mechanicals or the salesperson will or whoever comes out, we'll look at some of the mechanicals, see if there's any potential issues we may see. Um, and, that, and that kind of all contributes into coming up with that initial ballpark price. Um, and then if that's something you want to move forward with, uh, then, you, then you sign our design and planning fee. Um, and with that design and planning fee, then you get to have multiple meetings and kind of come up with your, our, exactly. At that point, then we have one of our project managers come out, take a look at all the mechanicals. Um, you know, salesperson looks initially, um, but we have the actual project manager come out, look through everything, see, you know, just kind of get a second set of eyes, confirm measurements. This is all part of the design and planning p portion. Um, and uh, plans are getting drawn at this point as well have a final meeting at one of our showrooms, kind of going through all the selections that you've uh, come up with and kind of pulling the whole package together and getting it ready for production.
And then uh, basically, after you've gone through that entire selection process, again, initially on the ballpark, we're putting allowances on the fixtures and $5 a square foot for tile or whatever the case may be. As you've gone through that planning process, you pick your actual tile. Maybe it's $4.44 a square foot. Maybe it's $5.38 a square foot, but we're attaching real final prices to the final uh, scope. And that's what, where we come up with our final construction price um, and move forward to a construction contract, which then gets us ready for production and begin your project. So again, in the design process, we start with conceptual design. Uh, this, a lot of your small bathrooms, in most cases, uh, most of the work we do is on 1900 to 1950s houses. Um, your kind of standard five by eight, five by nine, kind of toilet in the back, or uh, tub in the back of the bathroom or on the side. Pretty standard layouts, and for the most part, we don't, the footprint basically stays the same. But to your, what you talked about, Troy, was it? Uh, to what you talked about earlier, uh, potential basement bathroom, uh, conceptual design applies a little bit more no, there. There's, there's nothing there. There's nothing there, and you can kind of create something from a blank space on, depending on the traffic flow of your basement and where you want the door and how you want the tub and toilet laid out, you get a little bit more of a you know blank palette to work from. Um, whereas if you're remodeling an existing footprint, most in most cases, uh, on these older homes, you're landlocked. There's bedrooms on either side, there's hallways. Sometimes we can capture closets. Uh, we do do that occasionally, like if you want a linen, if there's a, a big closet on the other side of that wall, maybe you steal a portion of that closet and you know put a linen closet in it. Um, so we do have some of those. But the first step is conceptual design and coming up with that footprint. And again, here you can see on here we have you know multiple different ways to lay out the exact same space. And again, it kind of just depends on the workflow and function of. Now, it's possible, like upstairs, if I want to move my tub, you guys can do that. It's just finding space for it. Or we it can move stuff around. Uh, tub, uh, most often, tubs and sinks are easier to move than toilets. Uh, the reason being is. Uh, you know, tubs and toilets have in between an inch and a half to a two inch drain. And code says that you can take up to a third of a joist out, which is the framing member in your floor. You can take up to a third of it out um, and not compromise the structural integrity of it. While your tub, or I'm sorry, your toilet drain is three and a half to four inches. And so you can't just start cutting holes through it because to move your toilet around. So to moving toilets around is much more difficult than tubs and sinks for that reason. Uh, usually you usually have to drop it below the, the, your framing members, create soffits in the space below it, um, or do a bunch of much more complicated framing, headering things off, and it becomes a... So you can advise on, like you said, oh, yeah. Mo and this, don't move that. We can, we can tell that basically instantly when we go to your house. Uh, preliminary design, once you've kind of come up with that uh, basic footprint like we talked about, we know where the tub's going and where the sink's going and where the toilet's going, then you start talking about um, the preliminary design, you start picking out your finishes, coordinating your fixtures, toilet, um, different tile, accent tile, flooring, um, and uh, in this particular instance, you know, like vanity or whether you want a big vanity and no linen, or, or whatever the case may be. Um, but kind of pulling together again, kind of finalizing some of that footprint, pulling together um, some of your final selections and the overall style and look of the bathroom. So uh, you help us with this stuff? Yeah, so the, the salesperson who initially came out to your house, uh, you know, is a designer and they, uh, one of our bathroom designers will help walk you through it. Again, we have lots of different things in our showroom to show you. Um, one thing I like to suggest to people um, is, um, Back in the days before technology, I used to have people go and buy four or five bathroom magazines. Um, go through the magazine and flip through it, and maybe it's the ugliest bathroom you've ever seen, but you love the faucet. Circle that faucet and tag that page. Go through it. And the reason I have people do that is, first of all, to help you pull together your sense of style. And also, most people don't know the correct terms, and so they're saying the wrong thing. They can't get across what they're thinking in their head uh, as the type of things they like. Um, nowadays, there's Pinterest, there's House, um, there's all sorts of cool things online where you can basically do the same thing and go through and kind of pull together your own page, which is a great starting point to let our designers know what your sense of style is and 
generally what you like. And then they can offer all sorts of other suggestions that you may not have thought of that would kind of go along the same path of things that you like. Another thing, and we're also uh, throughout this whole process, where uh, the design process, we're talking about where toilet paper holders go and, and towel bars and, and uh, we do a lot of bathrooms where people are aging in place. Uh, grab bars, we like to get backing in the walls. A um, little story I like to tell is I have three kids and all three of them when they were potty training used the toilet paper holder to get out of the toilet. All three of them have ripped the thing out of the wall. Um, what we do is uh, we plan ahead uh, where those are going to go before we even start the project and when we get down to the studs we put big solid framing back there so instead of using sheetrock anchors we're really hitting solid framing and you know you can do a pull up off the toilet paper holder if you want <laughs> uh, anyways we also are we have some great CAD software um, you can see here we have you Get, gives you a good, as you start to pull your colors together and your layout, it gives you a good perspective of, uh, of, you know, a good general rendition of how your bathroom will look as you plan things out and pull, pull your ideas together and uh, see if it's kind of what you were pitching in your head. Um, when it comes to production as well, it, it, you know, it gives the guys a good, good overall view of kind of what we're trying to produce. Products and trends. Uh, vanity tops and sinks. Uh, you see here we have actually quite a few samples of uh, recycled glass, super cool. We have a really cool local guy who, uh, who does recycled glass at a much better price point that uh, most people could sell it at uh, because he is local, he is a small shop. Uh, you can pick out, if you notice here, like uh, the white one, the second from the left, or the blue one, there's different sized granules, there's more or less of them. Um, later on in the pictures you'll see I have a picture of a her whole bathroom remodel started with she found these little green knobs that she just loved. They were, they were to die for and she had to remodel her bathroom because of it. And talked to our recycled glass guy and had him make up a sample and got all sorts of different size. She got to pick the size of granules, the different shades of green that went into her glass top that kind of coordinated with her knobs that started this whole, this whole ordeal. Um, so anyways, we, as far as tops, we've been doing that quite a bit. Uh, culture marble is a nice uh, economical option. Uh, undermount sinks, does everyone know what an undermount sink is? Um, we actually have a sample of one in our kitchen. Basically what it is, instead of having a sink sit on the top with a rim that goes around that you have to caulk, that gets, personally, I do this all day long, I hate maintenance. I hate it more than anything. I hate caulk. Um, and you have to caulk those around. It just eventually gets grimy and gross and moldy. An undermount sink, mounts underneath and so you'd have a finished edge like this on the table that would go around your sink uh, with the sink mounted underneath. So you basically there's no lip. You can just swipe water right into your sink. They work pretty slick. So we do those quite a bit. Uh, pedestal sinks. Uh, again, everyone has these dinky bathrooms in these little in all these houses. Um, even if you're, a lot of people all go into bathrooms, they have this little vanity that's like 24 wide by, you know, 20 deep. And I mean, there's enough room to put like two rolls of toilet paper and your tool a toothbrush in it. Um, but visually, it takes up a lot of space. Uh, so we try to get people, you'll look, see some of the pictures as we come later. Um, pedestal sinks uh, do a big thing visually for the space. You can see it's kind of a subliminal thing as far as if you, the more floor space your eyes see, it makes the space feel bigger. Even though, even if your, vanity, your pedestal sink is 24 by 20 deep, it feels bigger even though you end up with the exact same square of sink space. Um, so we do pedestal sinks quite a bit on these little bathrooms. Uh, cabinetry, uh, uh, we do quite a bit of enamel cabinetry, white or off-white, um, actually even some uh, other neutral colors, a little gray and almond occasionally. Um, and we do occasionally do some uh, darker woods. Uh, I'm a, personally, I'm a big contrast fan. Uh, dark cabinet, light top or vice versa. Um, Flooring, uh, larger tile, um, tile that has kind of, a, it's called linen tile, it has kind of a little bit of a texture, a little bit of a, almost looks like a linen or a, a fabric almost, it's pretty cool. Uh, wood patterns on the tile, uh, stagger bond, which means uh, instead of lining all the lines up like a square, offset like a brick pattern is an easier way to describe it. Uh, plank sizes, uh, you could, after we're done you can walk through, we have a lot of stuff that's like 
four inches by 20 inches and big long tiles, kind of lineal type stuff. And that's still a, a tile that they glue down like the other kind of tile, like the yep. square tiles I have? Yep, just exactly the same thing. We use a thin set mortar on the floor and you know, it's applied the exact same way, uh, just a totally different look. Um, finishes, a lot of brushed nickel. Um, used to do a lot more oil rub bronze. That's kind of, we still do it, kind of it's a classic look, but we do a lot of brushed nickel lately. Um, lighting uh, on these little bathrooms, in most cases, you have one option, uh, light over the, over the medicine cabinet. Uh, occasionally, if there's enough width, we'll put sconces on either side, but sometimes these bath the sink is so close to the toilet, if you put sink sconces on the side, the one sconce in the, in the shower. So obviously it doesn't work. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but so we put a lot, uh, just kind of a two or three bulb fixture um, and then a, a exhaust fan with a, bulb, uh, with a light in it occasionally as well. And on these little five by eight bathrooms, works great. Lights them up super good. Finishes, uh, like I mentioned earlier, gray is a neutral as opposed to white, uh, getting a little bit off the beaten path, people are doing a little bit, things are other than white mm -hmm. more often, I guess. Um, I'm a big fan of, I tell people, you know, we go into these 50s, you'll see some pictures. Um, we, we go into all these 50s and 60s bathrooms where I've seen lime green, baby blue, pink, yeah. um, exactly. You, and the problem is, is when you have a pink tub and a pink toilet and pink tile, Turns out your bathroom will always be some variation of pink. Um, I'm a, I try to encourage people, like the things that are really permanent, tile, tubs, um, you know, things that you can't swap out very easily, get a little bit more neutral. Uh, every couple, two, three years, I'll come home from work, my wife gets a little hair up her butt, and uh, she gets a new shower curtain, repaints the walls, and uh, you know, and maybe she'll buy a new no a knob, I have one knob in my whole bathroom I met on my medicine cabinet, and she'll get a new knob and it's a, a new towels and I've switched it around, but my classic subway tile and my hex floor, it, 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 it's a new bathroom, but she, my wife did it by herself, you know, in the day and, uh, you know, it costs a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. so, um, so don't put a pink tub in. Can you paint my pink tub? Yes, oh, that's a good question. Uh, so it's yes, like top. It's like bigger. so there is a process that we use quite often. Um, one of the things we'll talk about is basically if you remove your tub, you're gutting your bathroom to the studs. A tub is completely locked in with flanges so it doesn't leak over the side of your tub um, up behind all the walls. Um, so to get the tub out, all the walls have to come out as well, all the way down to the studs. Um, so, and it's an expensive part of the project as well. So a lot of people will save money on keeping their existing tub and having it reglazed. Uh, the term reglazing is a little bit misleading. It doesn't actually get reglazed like in a kiln, like an original cast iron would. Um, it is uh, an acrylic epoxy product that is sprayed on, um, but it, it lasts quite a bit, or quite a while. Um, I actually did it to my mom's tub, like seven or eight years ago. We just redid it this last year. So it, it has a, you know, six, seven year, eight year lifespan before it starts to fail again, but it can be redone again. But you can reglaze your tub three times before, the color can change. yeah, before the, before you get to the cost of replacing an entire tub. So there is that option. Other items to consider, uh, preparation for accessories, wall hung sink, grab bar, stuff like that. That's what I talked about with the old toilet paper holder story, kind of getting that backer. And again, this is happens through the design process, thinking out where everything goes, having your, plot, uh, your project completely planned out before you hit production, before you start. Lighting, uh, types, quantity, lamps. Uh, again, there's two bulbs or three, I don't know. I mean, uh, and it, you can get a lot of style variation with that fixture that goes over your light or your sconces. Um, I mean, you could get a, like a flush mount ceiling fixture as well, but most often, you know, it's, it's more of a, uh, a uh, over, the, over the medicine cabinet type fixture. Do people do recess lighting in bathrooms very much? We do it some. On some of the newer homes, we will. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these 20s and 30s bathrooms, personally, I don't think it fits the style so much. Sometimes uh, if it has its own secluded shower and it's kind of 
dark in there, then sometimes we will put a, like a, a water resistant recess can in there just to light that shower up well. Um, uh, but not very often, 20% of the bathrooms we do maybe. Right. So definitely an option. It's just not something we do a lot just because we work on these older homes a lot, but uh, proper exhaust system. I'm a huge, huge ac uh, advocate of putting a bath fan in. Uh, we put a really cool uh, uh, timer switch in. It's got like a little 5, 15, 30, and 60 minute button. Um, and so basically, here in Minnesota, either it's hot and humid or it's colder than hell. One of the two. And so our houses are closed up and all that moisture stays in that bathroom. You get a couple family members to do their showering and that moisture stays in that bathroom. It gets that mildewy smell. Paint my ceilings. Peeling. Paint falls off, everything starts to fail because there's all this moisture in there. Well, you can push that 30 minute button um, and the bath fans are good enough uh, that they are recirculating that air many times in that 30 minutes. And, that, and you can leave, go to work, it just turns off and you've gotten rid of all that hot, humid, moist air and got it out of your house. You know, like around the top of your tub where that meets the tile, you know, like I can only imagine that if you're looking to remodel your bathroom, probably all of the caulk at your bathrooms look black and gross. And, you know, it's just a natural home maintenance thing you have to do every year or two. Uh, if you're really proactive with using a bath fan, you can almost like double that time on how often you have to redo that caulking. And so you said you switch them separately? So it's not a itself you yeah exactly the fans on its own uh, the fan has its own switch if you do choose a fan with a light we can that gets switched separately and then usually the main lighting which is that main fixture that's around your medicine cabinet um, that one is also switched on its own because right now in my bathroom the, the outlet the light and the fan are all on one switch so I can never leave it on so I have that problem with the mold which is, and stuff because you don't want the light on all pretty common because the way these bathrooms were originally wired is um, on those lights was the plug-in um, and they weren't ever even switched they were like local and at some point people you know someone would have added a switch to it or some handyman did um, but a lot of the time it's very common for it to all be on one that's yeah. Basically, we, <laughs> yes. As soon as we as soon as we got the whole thing, then we can redo all the wiring and get, get it the way it should be. Uh, privacy of bath door placement. Usually, that comes to like if you're designing a basement bathroom. Most of the time, your bathroom door is where your bathroom door is. Uh, occasionally, we will put in insulation in the walls, uh, and by doing that, uh, you can kind of control. <laughs> How much everyone hears your business. In the older houses, if they're plaster and lath walls on either side, they're kind of sound deadeners in themselves. Also, if you have the larger cast iron or uh, galvanized drains, they are not very noisy. Um, it's the plastic drains, which is what we use. They do have a, you can hear the water going through them. Uh, the advantage of it is that they don't clog like the galvanized does, but uh, uh, can have a little bit of sound. We don't do it super often. Um, but every once in a while people will request it. Uh, universal barrier free design. I mentioned briefly earlier that we have been doing quite a bit of age in place type bathrooms, uh, taking tubs out and uh, putting in just a shower instead. Um, we actually have some pretty cool products now where you can have even a curbless shower, which means that uh, you have your five foot wide tub and the shower ramps up and away and you just have one big long lineal drain until there's no curb. I mean, so you can walk in there with a walker, uh, very easy to get in, no trip hazards, you know, it works well for people who want to stay in their home and be as safe as they can. New concept my partner and I have uh, been working on, um, the industry as a whole uh, in the last four to five years is the whole hierarchy of material distribution has completely changed. Um, five, six, seven years ago, some of these flooring samples and some of the stuff you see around you here would never be here. Uh, they would, uh, they would, or we wouldn't be allowed to sell them directly, I guess would be a better way to say it. Um, you know, you'd have, we'd have to go through a flooring store who goes through the regional distri uh, distribution center, who goes through the, uh, or, or the local distribution center, who goes through the regional distribution center, who goes through the national distribution center, who buys it from the guy who makes it. <laughs> and everybody takes a little piece of the pie. It's silly. Um, well, once uh, the housing market tanked, um, they st and they weren't selling nearly what they were because there was no new homes being built, uh, 
they started opening up their lines of communication, much to the chagrin of stores like flooring stores and tile stores. Uh, my partner is a genius with uh, uh, kind of working directly with the manufacturer. The, instead of all those steps, he goes to the guy who makes it um, and, you know, has set up some, so we are actually distributors of all these products, but we never would have been able to before. So we can get some phenomenal pricing. I mean, on your basic three by six subway tile, we can get it cheaper in Home Depot. Um, and so we came up with this concept of a bath in a box uh, for people who are uh, handymen or don't live by hardware stores or aren't local. You know, you can through Skype and we have a, a few different uh, uh, systems set up. You can go through and deal with, have, deal with one of our designers, uh, talk you through how to take measurements and pictures of your bathroom, do a full takeoff of all the material you need, have it shipped and dropped at your doorstep. So. Will they ship you out to put it together? <laughs> no, no, that, that, that's actually extra. It's, uh, it's quite expensive. That uh, doing the demo will save you about $1,000. Uh, tile, accessories, one little antidote I like to tell people. Um, if you were to have Home Depot or Castle Bath in a Box, come and drop every screw, nail, piece of sheetrock, tile, every last thing that is involved in doing your bathroom remodel on your front yard. Depending on your selections, it you know, equates to somewhere to 30 to 40 percent of the cost. The rest of it's labor. Um, it's the fact that there's going to be two guys in your house every single day, all day long for three weeks, gutting your bathroom and putting the thing back together. Um, and so they're, they're, that's what you're. That's a big part of what you're paying for. So um, about how long it takes is three weeks. Three to four weeks. Um, depends. On, Depends on selections, and again, I'll be touching base on our scheduling and production part here in just a minute. Uh, thinking green, green is used to be new; it's not anymore. Everyone knows green. Um, uh, there's a lot of different things you could do. Uh, there's a lot of cool reuse it centers. Um, you can get old bathroom doors, medicine cabinets, bathtubs, etc. Um, sometimes it works good. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, some people will do it for the cosmetic part, the eclectic part of it, you know, kind of the old feel of it, but doesn't necessarily save as much money as you may think because we have to spend all this labor to modify it, make it fit your space and such and get it there. But uh, it still can be a very cool green option to kind of reuse. FSC uh, Lumber, um, uh, Forest Stewardship Council, basically it's a lumber that's grown in a nice green organic way. Low flow toilet or dual flush toilets. Everyone know what those are? There's two, two buttons on the top of the toilet. Basically a, one that will do a, a 0.8 gallon flush for a smaller job and a, and a, a 1.6 gallon flush for the larger jobs. Uh, again, another way to save water. Buy water efficient shower heads. That's an easy you know, weekend warrior type project. Use PEX piping instead of copper. Anyone know what PEX is? Are you using PEX that, these days? Almost exclusively that's what we use. Uh, PEX is a phenomenal product. It's way cheaper than copper. Uh, it's the plastic stuff, right? It's the plastic stuff. They've been using it in Europe for years and years and years and okay. per normal we're catching up. up. Oh yeah, they, in Europe they say, they say it's a 100 year guarantee. Um, it's pretty impressive stuff. It's way cheaper than copper, um, way easier for the plumbers to run, um, just overall. So it's less labor, less material, work, and it just, and uh, I don't know, it's just a great product. Replace old leaky windows with new Energy Star rated thermal pane windows, LED light bulbs, uh, recycled glass floor and wall tile, kind of like we talked about, or countertops, low or no VOC paints. Um, again, a lot of these things are kind of baby steps. And the price of, it used to be the price of green. If you wanted to be green, you're going to spend a lot more. It's really starting to equal out where you can be green um, and not have to spend a bunch more money. Uh, low and no VOC paint used to be crazy expensive compared to your standard latex. But uh, it is getting, the price points are coming to an equilibrium where they're much closer now. Here's an example of uh, one of our, uh, just kind of a, one of our CAD plans. Notice. All this stuff, by the way, you can find on our website um, so you can get a closer view if you want at home. But uh, notice all the notes talking about the tile and how that's set and the vanity and, you know, all the dimensions and the type of fixtures are going on here and where accessories are going. We really try to come up with a, like I keep harping on, we, we really come up with a full set of plans, come up with the 
well-planned design project from beginning to end before we hit production. Uh, once we hit production, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, not going to sugarcoat it. We do our very best, uh, and we are actually quite good at it. But it uh, at, at making a process that is not ideal as good as it can be. But we want to shorten that process as much as possible. And planning well before we start tearing the first tile off the wall will make that length of time as short as possible. Do you guys pull permits then? Oh yes, yeah. definitely. We pull a general building permit and then we end up having to pull a one for each of the three mechanicals for the plumbing, the electrical, and the HVAC. So you'd use like these plans for all of that permits? Yep, so exactly. With that, with that 225 design fee, you get all the way through these plans that you can go down and pull a permit at the city. And that's exactly what we do. Um, again, just kind of layouts, laying out where lights and mirrors and accent bands of tile and um, sink centers and fixture selections. And again, just really making, so everything that you talked about with your salesperson through the design process gets translated to all the guys who are in the field who are actually going to be building the project that you guys have been envisioning for the last weeks. Design process, roughly two to four weeks, I like to say it's kind of up to you. Some people can come in and spend an hour and a half and say, I like that, I like that, I want to blue, do blue walls, I want this tile, I want that, and there you go. You've designed your bathroom and you're all done. Some people will take their tile home, they'll stare at it for a couple of weeks and mull it over and they'll bring it back and say, no, I don't like it, let's try something else. And it takes them three weeks to get through their tile design or their tile selection. Also sometimes, you know, everyone's busy, everyone has jobs. Uh, Sometimes people can't meet for two weeks. Sometimes people are like, I can meet you in three hours. Let me know if you're available. Uh, <laughs> so the design process is, you know, it somewhat is dictated by you. Um, the remodeling process, once you've gone through the whole process and you've come up with your final plan, your final scope, everything's all ready to go. You've kind of, you're ready to pull the trigger and you've kind of come to terms with spending the money. You're like, okay, I'm ready to go. That process, depending again on the scope, but your average gut to the studs, five by eight, five by nine bathroom, takes about four weeks. Um, sometimes it touch less, touch longer, but between three and a half to four and a half weeks. We are one of the only people in the industry that offers a guaranteed completion date. Say the day we're gonna be done by, or the amount of time that we're gonna complete your project, if we don't finish it, uh, we'll pay you $40 a day for every work day until it's done. More planning equals lower chance of surprises during construction, like it says up there, and I've been saying, again, it's, we're real big on the design up front. Uh, to make the whole production process go smoothly. Now, during, during the work time, are people working like full time? Um, Pretty much. Uh, d good question. During drywall, um, you know, first day of drywall, and they hang all the drywall and put their first coats of mud on. You know, that everyone's there all day. But mm -hmm. you know, there are certain parts where there's dry times. So, you know, they'll come and put a coat of mud on again the next day, and that takes an hour and a half, and and it just dries, you know. Uh, but there will be someone at your house every single day. Uh, it keeps moving forward. Again, to, and, uh, to, get, to, to get to that three and a half to four and a half week uh, le you know, project length time, we pretty much have to be. The three to five day bathrooms, not real. Not real. <laughs> they actually put them together, uh, but they use super speed set stuff. They're working all night long. Uh, the drywall company we use, uh, the owner happens to be one of my good friends. Uh, he, uh, he has done some of those bathrooms on the TV shows. And he says they are going back for the next week or two afterwards doing touch-ups. So they take certain snapshots to make it look pretty. And, you know, it, 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 it kind of sells nice. But, uh, you know, like you were saying about tile, like they use speed set mortar, which, you know, just is not a great product for doing it. It works great if you have to fix a tile, but doesn't work great if you're trying to do it as fast as you can to set an entire bathroom. Remodeling process. Homeowner roller coaster is a little chart. Again, you can find this on our website. This is set up for like a nine month, like huge second story edition project, but it gives you the general idea. Again, I like to, we're really good at getting through the process of making something that isn't ideal as good as it can be. Uh, but I still like to kind of set expectations appropriately. It's a pain. There's guys coming in and out of your house all day long. Um, uh, we're really, we actually get lots of compliments. So we're super proactive on our site prep and protecting paths to the workspace. We put a plastic door up on your, uh, on your doorway with a couple of zippers, tape off the vents for dust control and basically make these little ET bubbles everywhere to kind of really control the dust. 
But uh, that being said, drywall dust is nasty stuff. It will stay airborne for weeks. Um, if we're doing your bathroom in one corner of your house on the second floor, you will find dust a week later in your basement in the opposite corner. It will just, it's amazing how it finds its way through. So I like to prepare people for the fact that you will have a fine coat of dust on everything. Uh, you know, we put drop cloths or put plastic over your own furniture. We want to make sure we're protecting and stuff like that. But I uh, kind of like to set expectations. You know, you're all excited to do your bathroom. You go through the whole design process. It can be a little grueling sometimes, even on a, a room the size of your bathroom. You'll find there's a lot of things to pick. Going through getting everything priced out and kind of come up with your final construction price. And, you know, it's like, uh, it's expensive. <laughs> and uh, like, okay, well, I'm going to do it. You kind of wrap your head around. You're, all, you're ready to go. Comes back up here to the top to demolition. You're excited. You're, you're ready to do this thing. You've pulled the trigger. Uh, you're all excited. Um, and again, this happens pretty fast on the bathroom. But, uh, you know, tearing it apart. And then electricians come and put wires in. And plumbers come and do their piping. And... You know, we run the bath fan and each day you come home, it's still a mess. It looks pretty much the same, except for there's some extra wires. <laughs> Not that spectacular. The mechanicals and, and the drywall is usually a lower point. But once we get down to the drywall on a bathroom, that's usually kind of like, after that, it starts to get better and better and better every day. You know, then the painting starts going, you know, we get color on the walls, we get tile on the floor. Uh, start setting plumbing fixtures, cabinets are going in, and you're just getting more and more excited as now you're, what you have been looking at pictures of and little samples is now coming together as a whole project. Notice here, when you get to the end, you're never quite as high as when you started. You're just happy to have us out of your house, as pleasant as we were, happy to get us out of your house and just uh, get back into living in your own space and getting things cleaned up. But then, uh, then you have kind of your final high, you know, you're starting to use the space and you just love it. And that's, it's usually pretty typical. So anyways, that's the emotional roller coaster of a remodeling project. Budget <laughs> considerations, moving plumbing, kind of touched on that earlier. Uh, you move plumbing, adds costs. Plumbers are... They make the most money of everyone that's at our projects. So the more time that they have on the project, the more it is. Plan ahead to save time and money. Kind of goes back to, again, planning up front. So you're not going to have any delays or anything like that. We can just keep things moving forward. Choose fixtures to save water. Kind of like the toilet and efficient shower how we talked about. Take out the tub equals redo the bath. Kind of touched on that as well. The one thing with remodeling I've been fighting for years when I go to clients' houses is, you know how much a gallon of milk costs, you know how much a pizza costs, you know how much a new uh, Volvo costs, but a new bathroom is, you can get Joe Blow out of his truck, who can sometimes do a nice job, uh, but you never know, and he could only do one project at a time, um, to, you know, people who will mark things up 200% and are just crazy, crazy high-end design build firms. Um, and then a million things in between. We really, really pride ourselves on, we really think we are the best value in remodeling. Uh, professional, great designers, great selection centers and showrooms. Our motto is we really try to be the, rem uh, the professional remodeler for the average guy. And so I mean, we're happy to do your high-end project, perfectly capable. But um, you know, this kind of will go through everything from a refreshed project to kind of like a, a smaller one. Now your average very common question, your average gut to the studs, five by eight bathroom, new tub type of thing. Depends on your selections, uh, depends, but if you're gonna do tile on the floor, tile, tile surround in the shower, you're 15, 16, 17. Um, but there's all sorts of other cool, like luxury vinyl tile you can do on the floor. You can keep your tub in and reglaze it. Um, you know, pedestal sink instead of a vanity. There's all sorts of different things you can do to get it less than that price point. Um, or, you know, there's really cool things you can pick that can also in increase that price point, of course. Return on investments. It kind of depends on the state of your bathroom. If your bathroom is literally falling apart with tiles falling off the wall and hardly functions, obviously anything you do to improve it is going to be a great return on investment because we started with sucked. <laughs> but if you start with a pretty functional bathroom that maybe you just want to change aesthetically, you know, your return on investment might not be as great. So it, it kind of is very situational on the, the state of it. Uh, there, there are new, new reports that come out each year. Um, but uh, in general, you know, a bathroom and kitchen is, are both very good investment-wise places to put your money. 
Rebates and incentives, again, our website has a lot of great uh, resources f as far as this goes. Um, you know, there used to be a lot of window rebates. So some of those have gone by the wayside, uh, but there are some new ones also. Um, check out some of your local stuff. There's a lot of cool local grants, local um, loans, community type things. Um, so do some research because there are some really cool programs out there. Uh, salvage and uh, reuse it resources. Uh, we kind of talked a little bit earlier about uh, whether you wanted to kind of use some reclaimed things, the old door, medicine cabinets. Um, is, again, you can find this on our website, some pretty cool places throughout the city that uh, you can get some of those places. Um, and those are all open for the public to go on and look around. Oh, definitely. Yep, yep. Uh, tax credits uh, for donations. Um, again, a lot of this stuff's on our website. Uh, uh, and some of our salespeople could help you out with it too, but there are some pretty cool resources out there. Kind of like I talked about, uh, you can follow us on Pinterest, House, YouTube, all these different things. Um, and again, kind of to create your own page, you, know, you can go to our page and kind of look at some different ideas, different projects we've done. Uh, it's good, maybe a good starting point for you to pull together some of your ideas, some of your sense of style. You can create your own house page and uh, kind of pull some of your ideas together. Best of all, you can use uh, pin boards created by other people. Um, so you can go look at, you can get kind of like Facebook, you can get house, or you can get friends on Pinterest and take some of their ideas and put them on your steal board. Pictures. You can totally steal, <laughs> steal your best friend's ideas and, and don't tell them where you got them. Let's see, well, what, we have a bath video, uh, cleverly named by my partner, uh, uh, remodeling not as seen on TV. In case you weren't aware, remodeling on TV isn't real. The products that they show are often provided for free, which takes away your choices. The space is usually designed by the show's host, which leaves you with little input. And then they show time frames of three or four days, which no bathroom can legally be remodeled that fast while getting permits and inspections. And the costs they also show are highly inaccurate because labor, the biggest part of the job, is provided by you or friends or contractors wanting free advertisement or the TV host. But they count it as free. We're here in St. Paul, Minnesota, remodeling a bathroom in this 1922 Center Hall Colonial. At Castle Building and Remodeling, we remodeled over 50 bathrooms in 2011. We decided to shoot video of an entire bathroom remodel so we could show how bathroom remodeling really works. Welcome to Remodeling Not As Seen On TV. With the complete remodel, Castle will gut the walls to the studs, removing the original plaster and lath walls, tile flooring, vanities, and sink. Because older homes were built to last, demo can be tough. This bathroom had wire mesh behind the tile to strengthen the walls and ensure the tile was never removed. Also know that the ceiling is typically not torn out to avoid needing to re-insulate the attic above. Demolition of a bathroom typically takes about two days to complete. All debris is hauled to the dumpster. A sledgehammer is needed to break up the tub so it can be removed. Some homeowners elect to do demo themselves. We have heard it can be quite therapeutic. After demo is complete, framing can begin. Framing is needed to fur out the walls, and to prepare for a new recessed medicine cabinet. After framing is complete and inspected, the walls can be insulated and a vapor barrier can be installed. Day four uncovered some odor of a surprise. Lead waste piping was discovered under the bathtub and the city requires that it be replaced. Day five through seven of this project involved replumbing the bathroom to modern building codes and completing plumbing rough and inspections. On this project, a radiator was removed and replaced with a cast iron low profile baseboard radiator that allowed the toilet rough in location to move about five inches towards the outside wall and allow for a full size sink. During this time, a new bath fan was also installed along with an insulated vent and vapor barrier by a licensed HVAC company. This also required a separate inspection. After the plumber and HVAC contractors are complete, the electrical rough-in can begin. All electric was brought up to code and inspected. This included installing new electric in-floor heat with a programmable thermostat. A self-leveling floor was installed to encapsulate the fragile electric floor heat. Hauling a heavy cast iron bathtub up a flight of stairs can be a Herculean task. We often need to hire professional piano movers for larger, deeper soaking tubs. Ensuring the tub is level is critical for proper draining. Installing new sheetrock and cutting holes for electrical and plumbing usually takes at least a half day. In this case, we used half inch sheetrock on the walls and covered the original plaster ceiling with quarter inch sheetrock. The second day of sheetrock involves adding a layer of mud and tape to cover all seams. 
When the first coat of mud dries, a second coat can be applied. Once that is dried, the seams can be sanded smooth. Once the walls are smooth, they can be primed and prepared for paint. One coat of paint was applied later on this day after the primer dried. A certified tile backer should always be installed behind tile. The first step with tile install is laying out your pattern so there are even cut pieces in the corners. To begin tiling, a mastic is applied to the backer and tile is installed over the mastic. Tile is installed from the bottom up. The client chose a classic white subway tile in a staggered bond pattern. A white, black, and Carrera decorative insert was used to add visual interest. A Corian corner shelf was installed and tile was installed all the way to the ceiling. A 12 by 12 porcelain tile was chosen for the floor. Once again, when preparing to tile the floor, determining the layout of the tile is critical. The tile has a classic Carrera marble look, but at an affordable price point. Spacers are used to ensure equal spacing is maintained. Beadboard wainscoting was installed to maintain the classic look and feel, but is a lower cost alternative to tiling the walls. Grouting the tile floor and shower surround is one of the finishing steps of tile. Note, sealing the grout is not shown in the video but was completed and is an important step in protecting your grout from discoloration. Positioning of grab bars and shower curtain rods at the right height takes some planning. You may want to consult an expert or Google grab bar positioning to research the best heights and locations. Caulking to keep water out is a last step in installing all accessories. Traditional flat casing with back band was installed in the window and door. As you will notice, we installed wax paper behind the casing. This allows for quicker finishing and eliminates the need to tape and prep for trim painting. Top cap is installed on the beadboard. All millwork is finished with a bead of caulk to cover any gaps and prepare for paint. There is no footage available of the millwork being painted. The window and door casing was painted white, and on day 21, Castle said, let there be light. At this point, the electricians came back to install and hook up the bath fan, lighting fixtures, and install switches and plate covers, and have a final electrical inspection of their work. And on day 22, Castle said, let there be water. At this point, the plumbers came back to install the shower handle, shower faucet, pedestal sink, sink faucet, and have a final inspection of their plumbing work. Delivering and installing the tall linen cabinet in the niche next to the bathtub was quite a feat. Please note the beadboard next to the cabinet needed to be done after the cabinet was installed. On the final day, the space was given a final cleanup, and several punchless items were corrected to finish the project. Voila! Here are some after pictures of this gorgeous bathroom remodel. It might not have been done in three days like on TV, but it was done right and should look good and last another 60 years. To recap, remodeling on TV isn't real. When you choose to remodel with a professional, you'll get a design that fits your style and creates a functional space. You get a designer assisting you in the design process and with all selections. You get a completed bathroom remodel within about 20 to 30 days and a project that's planned from start to finish and no surprises along the way. Hopefully you'll end up with a space that you love for many years to come and a warranty from a reputable company that will stand behind their work. This is an old 1880s house in southeast Minneapolis um, that we ended up redoing. So this is what it turned into. Um, again, repainted the radiator. We put uh, uh, Carrera marble on the floor. Um, this one was actually, again, it was 1880s house, so the plumbing is a little odd. Uh, the pedestal sink and toilet used to be about eight inches off the wall. They kind of like hung out in the breeze. It was a little, <laughs> a little different. Uh, so uh, our salesperson, had um, the idea of putting a half wall here with a Carrera marble ledge that kind of like brought it out to the, so we didn't have to spend the money to move the plumbing back to the wall. It was, yeah, it was kind of a cool idea. Uh, new medicine cabinet, new shower enclosure, um, new tile shower surround. This actually was a good example of we reglazed this tub. Oh, there's one of the pink bathrooms. Actually, this is more of a, a peach, I think, but uh, kind of a goofy raised ledge that the tub was on. Um, great idea to step out of the tub with slippery feet and then uh, fall down a step. Um, but yeah, it, this was a 1980s house in Eden Prairie. Basically just an outdated bathroom. Uh, ended up gutting this one to the studs. Um, Got rid of that ledge here that the tub was up on. Uh, a salesperson had a really cool idea of having the, the accent, actually you can't see the entire thing, but the, that accent wraps around the entire bathroom, kind of through the shower, kind of ties the whole thing together. And the rest of it is just kind of a, you know, again, going back to like the real permanent things, being a little bit more neutral. Uh, we do a lot of subway tile, it's a classic look and just 
is, again, something you can mix and match with really easily. This 1922 is Arts and Crafts Home in St. Paul. Outdated, uh, bulky radiator. These particular pictures don't have it, but right to the right of this toilet. Oh, there you can see it right here. The toilet is right there. You can't quite see it. Big, huge radiator underneath the window. Um, and the toilet was actually a long ways from the wall to make room for the radiator. Uh, and you can just see in the bottom right hand corner there the door. The door basically almost scraped against the vanity. The, it was just every, and you can see how tight the toilet was to the vanity. Um, what we ended up doing is we took out the radiator and put, uh, it hooks up the existing boiler system, put in a low profile uh, radiator that you can see down here on the, in the left, actually moved the toilet over towards the window now that we didn't have that big radiator in the way. Um, we were able to get a nice big pedestal sink and move it over from the door so everything just had a, a little bit more room on that wall. This is a blue, blue, blue bathroom. <laughs> Toilet behind the door, not the greatest spot for it. Uh, vanity towards the sink. This is a kid's bathroom. This is actually a project that we in Minnetonka that we did that had two bathrooms back to back. So on the wall with the toilet and vanity on, the master bathroom is right behind it. This is the one I was talking about, how she had the green knobs and matched her cool recycled glass countertop to it. Uh, another example of an undermount sink. You can see the polished finished edge of the glass countertop that goes around with the sink underneath it. Without the, that's not, without, it's not a rim mount sink again that sits on the countertop. Cool legs. This is a good example too like we were talking of uh, th these are, this is tile, um, it's, but it's more of a lineal wood, mock wood looking tile. Um, normally I'm not a big fan of fake wood looking items, but this actually looks really cool. Put a new window in, you'll see in the master bath, we put a new, uh, it's called a transom window. It's a higher, shorter, wider window that we put in the shower. There was no window in either of these bathrooms before. Um, we also switched it around so the toilet is not behind the door anymore. A lot of these older bathrooms have a window in the shower. Um, you know, with the, you have your five foot tub at the end of the bathroom, a window in it. Window right in the center. And exactly. <laughs> and with wood, tr a lot of them have the wood trim around them still. It turns out wood and water don't play very nice. Um, so there's two options we do. Um, either we put in a vinyl replacement window or pocket window, uh, which means we leave the existing frame but put a new vinyl window into, in that existing frame um, and then tile right up to it. Um, so that way it kind of makes it a little bit more watertight. Uh, the other option is we take it out and build a glass block window. Um, and that's another good option. Again, it's much more water friendly, tile right up to it, get everything all caulked and uh, the water runs, runs right off the wall. Uh, here's again the back side of the vanity and toilet in this picture shared the wall with the vanity and toilet in that other picture. Um, again, just kind of outdated 70s I believe the house was, 60s maybe. And here we have a bathtub that they just didn't need a bathtub. They, this is, they, they have four bathrooms in this house. Uh, they had a really nice tub in one of the other bathrooms and in their master bathroom they didn't want a tub. Uh, they never took a bath. So, and you can see here no window. So here's the type of window. You couldn't see it very well in the other picture. Here's the type of window we added. Again, nice privacy, lets fresh air in, lets nice natural light in, um, but it's up higher. Um, this is a good example of the contrast I was talking about earlier. Dark vanity, light top, a um, little bit more contemporary tile, larger tile like we were talking about um, with a, a nice uh, glass and natural stone mix accent border that again kind of goes all the way around the room, ties, ties in with the vanity over here, it kind of goes around the whole room. Uh, 1920s, oh, 1912, four square in South Minneapolis. Here's another example of uh, one of those low pro ra radiators, got rid of the big one. Uh, she wanted to paint brown, so it kind of just kind of flow with the trim and not stick out too terribly much. Contrast, darker vanity, white top, a um, couple of rows of uh, accent border tile. This one has a really cool, she did not want a shower curtain or a shower door. Um, she wanted something more of a panel. Um, so we actually came up with this concept. This is a uh, 18 inch fixed mm -hmm. panel and then a uh, uh, 18 inch panel that just kind of swings in so she could swing it, reach in, turn on the water, um, and then when she straightened it out again, once she got into the shower, 
she didn't need a curtain or anything, and um, the splash day contained. 1940s Cape Cod in Highland Park. <laughs> Pink. This is an example of a console sink. Um, pretty cool. They have, uh, again, it kind of gives that spatial perception of more space like a pedestal does, but it gives you a little bit of storage space. You kind of hang towels on the side. You can stack towels or whatever the case may be. Uh, new medicine cabinet. This is a couple who was aging in place. We added grab bars, subway, surra subway tile, su surround tile uh, with a uh, porcelain tile to, to look like marble. House in Northeast, really cool hickory vanity on legs with a, a vessel sink, these are called. A vessel sink is where you have a sink that sits on top of the countertop. You can see like more, uh, see more of the sink profile basically. Example of a glass block window, uh, they have, it has a little vent in it, so that is a, a vent that opens up so you can get a little bit of fresh air in. Um, this is an example of they used to have a wood window in there and we removed it and put the glass block in. Floor, the tile floor is on a diagonal, which is another cool way in a small bathroom to just kind of mix it up. And then a mirror. So that's the end of our pictures. We're happy to come out and take a look at your bathroom. We can give you a ballpark estimate. We'll come out for free, take a look at things, talk through ideas. You can kind of let, you know, let us know what you're thinking uh, on ideas on your bathroom and maybe give you some new ideas and pull together some ballpark pricing for you and see if it's something that uh, you want to move forward with. So, um, thanks a lot for coming. Uh, again, everything is on our website, uh, www.castlebri.com. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for coming. Thank you. Thanks.